share my first chairing of a meeting with you. So thank you so much. So with that, I want to call the meeting to order of August 27th, 2015. I would like the verification of agenda posting, please. Yes, Madam Chair. The agenda was posted on Friday, August 21st, 2015 at 1.40 p.m. Yes, Madam Chair. The um, roll call is as follows. Commissioner Alvarez? Here. Commissioner, Commissioner Torres? Here. Commissioner Harvey? Here. Commissioner Lenore? Present. And I will note that Commissioner Huboy is absent today. from the public on items not listed on the agenda. This is the time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. Um, when the Planning Commission calls your name, please come to the podium uh, and speak to the Commission. Each speaker will be limited to two minutes. Please note that state law prohibits the Planning Commission from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any communications from the public? We have no communications for this item, Madam Chair. Okay. So then we're going to move into the public hearings. Our first public hearing is the Site and Architectural 2015-8, presented by Juventino and Martha Rodriguez. They're requesting a Site and Architectural approval for a facade improvement to an existing building located at 130 and 145th Street. Okay. Uh, and have the staff report, please. Thank you. The applicant is proposing facade improvements to the existing buildings located at 130 and 145th Street. The total square footage of the site is 16,688 square feet. The proposed facade improvements include new colors, stucco, corrugated metal siding, windows, doors, and new parapets. In addition to the facade improvements, the applicant will be constructing a new building to replace the existing Quonset hut on site. The site consists of four different establishments, two of which are active business. On the north elevation, they will be removing the existing roll-up door on the vacant building towards the east site, towards, towards East Street, and cover with stucco and install a new door to the left of the existing roll-up door on the vacant building. and fill an area with window where the window was with cityscape corrugated metal. There will be the installation of a new louver on the vacant structure. They will be constructing a new parapet on vacant building to conceal the corrugated metal roof ridge and restucco and paint the entire elevation in almond. For the south elevation, Maverick's welding building, there will be the installation of a new storefront door replacing the existing storefront windows with new smaller windows, removal of stucco on lower half of storefront and installation of new cityscape corrugated metal, removal of stepped parapet and construction of new parapet. The building will also be stuccoed and painted in, in almond color. For the new building that will be replacing the Quonset hut, they will be removing the roll-up doors and replace them with large glass windows. <coughs> There will be the installation of a new man door on the right side, installation of cityscape corrugated metal around the man door, and the installation of a metal, metallic silver metal soffit under the roof eave. For the east elevation, they will demolish the existing Quonset hut. In doing so, the stuck, they will be painting and, and they will be installing a new slate. In addition, they will be constructing a new pair of existing metal roof, 
and they will also be restuc restuccoing and painting the Maverick welding and vacant building in almond color. And last, we have the west elevation. They will be installing a new double window on the Maverick building on the corner. There will be the installation of a new single door on the east street side. They will be constructing a new parapet to cover existing metal roof line. The installation of a cityscape corrugated metal accents around new double windows, new door, a section of the new parapet, and the rear section of the building near Briggs Alley. They will also be restuccoing and repainting the Maverick welding and vacant building in almond color. The building is located within the downtown Hollister Historic District and is recognized as a contributing structure. The project will consist of only facade improvements. The Maverick building, the buildings in the particular, those located on 5th Street, Maverick Welding, and Botter Quonset Hut have been identified as contributing buildings in the downtown Hollister Historic District. The downtown Hollister Historic District is listed in the National Register of Historic Places and it is roughly bounded by 4th, East, South, and Monterey Streets. The original historical form of the building has been altered over time. However, the building still remains, it's retained some of its defining characteristics including the recessed windows, stepped parapet, flanking show window with the wood trim, stucco siding, and transom windows on the storefront. The proposed facade improvements on the south elevation will replace and alter many of the building's defining characteristics. The stepped parapet and flanking show window are consistent with the overall appearance of 1915 remodeling and should not be altered in any way that would take away from its original appearance in 1880. Condition number seven in the attached resolution requires that the stepped parapet and the transom windows located on the south elevation shall not be changed or modified in order for the buildings to maintain their historic integrity and comply with the Secretary of Interior requirements for historical preservation. While the Botter Quonset Hut and the rear of 145th Street are also located in the downtown Hollister Historic District, the United States Department of the Interior National Park Service defines them as non-contributing buildings. Therefore, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving site and architectural application number 2015-8, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Are there any questions for staff? <coughs> it's on the bottom. Yeah, can, can, you, can you see that? Oh, that's the existing, and that's, oh, so they are going to put a new door there. Because the report doesn't really reflect that, does it? Correct. This is the proposed west elevation. There is no okay. roll-up door being proposed for the west elevation. And um, in the, on the north elevation, when I went, went there today, the door is, in fact, on the right side of the roll-up door that they've sealed up now. On the, on the on the north elevation. It is it is I'm sorry, what was the question? It is on the it's on the it's left on side. The right side of the roll up door now. See the roll up door there? Are we are we are we talking about the existing the existing the north elevation? Right. Correct. It's on the it's actually on the right side. Right. But is it gonna be like that? Correct. They're going to replace the right door with a larger door and then okay. install a new door right next to where the roll-up door used to be. There's, there's already been work done there. Did, did they do some stuff already and then, and then came to the planning commission? Uh, that is correct. That okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Oh, I, uh, one more. I'm sorry. I did think of this. What's the actual use there? It's a manufacturing type use. Do you have the uses on, on the floor plan? They are being used as commercial uses currently. So, so it's a commercial mixed use, but, but aren't they manufacturing a product there? Currently, is there, is there welding? The applicant is here. Is there fabrication? We, we find that consistent with the downtown commercial mixed use? Curren currently, no. Um, it, it may be non-conforming at this point. 
but the um, the use for downtown commercial mixed use it would be more uh, for commercial. Um, Not with this. This is just for um, facade purposes only. They're not. There's, th no, there's no expansion inside yeah. at with this application. Correct. The two vacant buildings there. They'll just be something out. They will. They they will be working with the planning department and building department to to do tenant improvements for for any proposed uses on on that. Okay. Yeah. So they're not expanding. They're not expanding. Yeah. We would we would not allow okay. for for that use. You're welcome. Do we have any speaker cards? Madam Chair, there are no speaker cards for this item, but we do have the applicants present if they would like to. Um, would you like to address their position? Well, maybe you have questions. I've asked mine. You're good? Anybody else? Okay, so we'll close the public hearing at 611, and we'll bring it back to the commission. Are there any questions? Comments? Okay, then I'll entertain a motion. Well, uh, we have to, um, the resolution number? Resolution number 2015-30. Madam Chair, I was just told that your microphone was off. If you could please, thank you. Well, I'm kind of loud, but hey, it's good. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve Site and Architectural Review 2015-30, subject to the findings and conditions in the staff report. All those in favor say aye. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Said so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay. There's uh, there's that item. Congratulations. Okay. We have public hearing number two, conditional use permit for M and M plant sales. They're requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a retail garden center to sell pottery gift items and landscape plants at 190 San Benito Street in the downtown mixed use zoning. The applicant is currently operating on the site with a temporary use permit. This is, is categorically exempt. May we have the staff report, please? Certainly, thank you. The applicant is requesting approval of a conditional use permit to allow a retail garden center that would sell pottery, gift items, and landscaping plants in a downtown mixed-use zoning district. Hours of operation would be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., five days a week, Wednesday through Sunday, on, and on certain weeks, only Friday through Sunday. The use would be proposing a total of two employees. The site is currently broken up into two properties. Assessor, assessor's parcel number 1541900008 is where the actual retail garden center would be located. The site plan shows a temporary vinyl cabana shade structure located in the center of the site, surrounded by black mesh tarps. The size of the cabana is 24 feet by 20 feet and is 480 square feet. The site plan also calls for two trash receptacles and a portable ADA compliant restroom loca located adjacent to the cabana shade structure. The second property, APN number 0541900002, will be used strictly as a parking lot. The site plan shows a total of six parking spots, two nine by 18 parking stalls, three 10 by 20 parking stalls, and one 88 compliant parking stall. Currently, section 17.18.060 of the Hollister Municipal Code requires plant nurseries to include one parking space for each 300 square feet of indoor display area, plus one space for each 1,000 square feet of outdoor display area. The site currently does not offer any indoor display areas, but does feature an approximately 6,000 square foot outdoor display area. Pursuant to section 17.18.060 of the Hollister Municipal Code, the 6,000 square foot outdoor display area would require a total of six parking spaces. There are currently six spaces shown on site, including one ADA compliant parking stall. The use meets parking requirements as specified in section 17.18.060. Thanks, Michael. The property is within the California Department of Conservation Spatial Study Seismic Zone of the Alquias Priolo Act, and pursuant to Article 3, Section 3603A, as indicated in the staff report, Alquias Priolo Act, no structure for, hu for human
1E of the Alquis Perillo Act is structured for supporting or sheltering any use or occupancy. In approximately 480 square foot of person hours per year, as indicated in the conditional use permit number 2015 5. Um, I have a question. Is this, uh, well, maybe I should ask the applicant, but is this be a permanent, a permanent use? Uh, it's not a temporary, and then it's, it's permanent. Good question. My, my, my question with that is the restroom. Yes. I mean, there's not a structure, so there's no way to put a bathroom inside, obviously. Correct. Correct. Um, uh, with the conditional use permit, they are they are uh, thinking of having a more permanent as opposed to the temporary. Um, previously, they were in a different site for for about three months or so. Right. Then they moved to San Benito Street. Um, they want to continue to have the use there more of a of a in a permanent uh, manner. Um, however, if if the owner decides to to build at that site uh, through a certain architectural process, then at that point they would look into. Um, moving to a different site or working within the same site. But at this point, um, the permanent uh, fixtures were determined that um, the city was not going to require them um, as a condition um, as long as they provided an ADA uh, portable restroom on, on the site. Did, did, did the DRC discuss the location of the restroom? I, I'm struggling with it being on next to San Benito Street when there's areas. Is it because of the ADA compliance? I mean, I really don't like where the restroom is. Yes, yeah, so, it's so right it would be. It's right in front on San Benito Street, and I'd like to see it in the back. Any other comments? Okay, I will open the public hearing at 618, 618. Any comments? Any we do comments? not have any items, uh, any speaker cards for this item. Um, the applicant is here though, if um, she would like to address the commission. No, okay. any questions? Okay, so we'll close the public hearing at 618, bring it back to the commission level for any discussion or questions. Okay, hearing none, I will call for, uh, call for a motion. We'll make a motion to approve conditional use permit 2015-5 resolution 2015-31 yes. as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nay. Next public hearing is minor subdivision 2015-3 and site and architectural review number 2015-7 for Jaime Correa. They're requesting approval of a site and architectural and a minor subdivision of an existing 0.55 acre lot into two lots located at 540 Line Street. They're located in a high density residential performance overlay zoning district. The applicant is requesting the SNA to build two residential units along Line Street for a total of four and five residential units along West Side Street for a total of seven new residential units. It's categorically exempt from CEQA. Any, uh, will I have the staff report, please? Absolutely, thank you. 
The applicant is requesting approval of a minor subdivision, 2015-3, to subdivide an approximately 0.55 acre lot into two separate high density residential parcels. Parcel one at 0.23 acres and parcel two at 0.24 acres. The applicant is also requesting site and architectural approval for the construction of six apartment units consisting of three separate buildings on a 0.23 acre parcel along Line Street and a 0.24 acre parcel along West Side Boulevard. The property is located within the R4 High Density Residential Performance Overlay Zoning District. There are currently two residential structures on site along Line Street, a single-story two-bedroom unit and a two-story two-bedroom unit. The proposed project consists of two 1,206 square feet two-bedroom units and four 1,489.6 square feet four-bedroom units. The three duplexes range in height. Building A and B are each 27 feet six inches tall, and building C is 24 feet six inches tall. High density residential allows for 12 to 35 units per acre. Parcel one would require a minimum of three units, and parcel two would also require a minimum of three units. Both proposed parcels for minor subdivision 2015 3 would meet the minimum density. Building A would be one of two. Forty-four point eight square feet and can a single bedroom and a full bathroom. The second floor is also seven hundred and forty-four point eight square feet and consists of three bedrooms and two full bathrooms. The duplex would have a composite asphalt shingle roof with a typical roof pitch. The exterior surface would be sand finished stucco. The total ground Floor coverage for building A would be 2,979.2 square feet. Each unit has access to a private yard in the rear of the duplex. Unit A, I'm sorry, unit A is also um, has access to a 200 square foot yard, while unit B has access to a 520 square foot yard. Building B would be located in the southwest section of the site. is also 744.8 square feet and consists of three bedrooms, a two, two full bathrooms. This duplex also has an attached 728 square foot non-habitable storage unit. The duplex would have a composite asphalt shingle roof with a typical roof pitch. The exterior surface would be sand finished stucco. Total ground floor coverage for the building B would be 3,696 square feet. Each unit has access to a private yard in the rear of the duplex, both units C and D have access to a roughly 200 square foot private yard. Thanks, Michael. Between the two existing structures and the two proposed duplexes. The first floor of each unit is 600 square feet. Consist of two bedrooms and a full. Of the structure would comprise of units A and B, front door, seven double windows, and two single windows. The middle section of the second floor would just would jut out three feet over the unit's front doors. The duplex would have a composite asphalt, fall, asphalt shingle roof with a 4.5 typical roof pitch. Both the roof and the three foot overhang on the south front elevations would be adorned with simple corbels. The exterior surface would be sand finished stucco. Total ground floor coverage for building C would be 2,412 square feet. Each unit has access to a private yard in the rear towards the south of the duplex. Unit A has a 600 square foot yard, while Unit B has a 200 square foot yard. As the commission can see, buildings A and B, up in the, in the screen, do not have the window trim, door trim, and decorative corbels. 
as building C, but buildings A and B do have a cantilevered second floor along the west elevation and a decorative band that wraps around the entire structures. If it is the desire of the Planning Commission, a condition of approval can be added to the resolution to require buildings A and B to be aesthetically consistent with building C or to accept the design as the applicant has proposed. The site has access from both Westside Boulevard and from Lane Street. As a condition of approval, the applicant shall dedicate and improve a section of Westside Boulevard per City of Hollister Engineering Department requirements. A 26-foot wide driveway off of Westside Boulevard towards the southwest end of the lot would allow access to a small parking lot with eight parking spaces and one ADA-compliant parking stall. The driveway off of Line Street is a 41 feet wide and allows access a parking lot with three spaces. Two trash enclosures would be located on site, one on each parking lot. The parking lot on Line Street on the Line Street side of the site would be covered in permeable pavers, while the parking area on the west side section of the site would be covered in asphalt. Landscaping depicted on sheet L1, preliminary landscape plan, illustrates bark, mulch, ground cover around half of building B and in the common open barbecue area. The site would have 15 gallon deciduous trees, five gallon broadleaf evergreen shrubs, and one gallon perennial and grasses. Two street trees will be placed along the west side of the property per city standards. All landscaping has low water usage and all irrigation will be via an automatic time system that utilizes a drip system. <laughs> Additionally, the site features a bioretention area within the common open space. The City of Hollister General Plan Land Use Element Policy 8.3 is listed to ensure that new development in multifamily neighborhoods supports rather than detracts from the existing residential character of the area. Older single family residences are located along Line Street. The site layout has been designed to help maintain the residential character near Line Street and in the area. The buildings have been oriented to conceal the view of off street parking to residents on Line Street. Land use element eight, sorry, land use element policy 3.5 requires that the provision of usable open space in multifamily residential developments. The proposed project would include ground floor patios and common recreational facilities such as an outdoor picnic area and a meandering walkway through the center of the site. On the west side boulevard side of the lot, the total number of parking stalls required would be seven. The applicant has provided a total of nine parking spaces. On the Line Street side of the property, the total number of parking stalls required would be seven. The applicant has provided a total of seven parking spaces and therefore meets the parking requirement. The applicant <coughs> is also proposing a total of 16 off-street multifamily housing parking spaces and therefore requiring a total of two bike parking spaces on site. If the minor subdivision were to be approved, the first lot would have have a lot coverage of 34.8% and the second lot that of 29.9%. If the lot were to be subdivided, the lot coverages would meet the standard of 60% maximum in the section as laid out in section 17.04.030 of the residential uh, general development standards. The R4 zoning district allows a maximum building height of 45 feet. Building A and building B would both be two stories tall with a height of 27 feet 6 inches which conforms to the zoning ordinance. Building C would be two stories tall with a height of 24 feet and six inches, which also conforms to the zoning ordinance. Therefore, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal and consider approving minor subdivision 2015-3 and site and architectural application number 2015-7, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Are there any questions for staff? Any questions? Any questions? Uh, just want to, uh, so the elevation, uh, there was a concern from staff regarding existing uh, proposed elevations. So they're, they're concentrating a lot of the decorative elements on, looks like the south, south side, correct? Right? Uh, those are the those are the front facades of each of the structures, um, they face and, the, each other. and they are building A and building B face each other, while building C is on the Line Street side of the property, um, and is considerably different from that of A and B. If, if you look on it right here, trying to get the 
visual aesthetics from street views, then that's what you're That's what's being proposed right now, basically the street view. Bottom A and B would actually be more towards facing each other um, on the north-south direction. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was kind of, I had to really study it to, to figure it out, but the two center ones face each other. Yeah. Explain the concern again. It's um, building C. As you can see, it has more of a decorative um, trim uh, around the windows and the okay. doors and the core bells um, on, on the roof line and so forth, uh, whereas building A and B do not have it. However, they do, buildings A and B do face each other in a north-south north, right. north direction. Um, the the um, western part of buildings A and B would be facing West Side Boulevard. Right. Um, and so if it is a desire of the commission to have buildings A and B to be more compatible to more towards um, to that one of building C, um, if if the commission wishes, we can add a, a resolution, a condition in the resolution. Um, however, if the commission desires to keep it as a, keep it as is, um, then no changes need to be proposed to the resolution. Well, I did think it was a little plain on on those ends, but I mean, I understand why there's not windows there. And yes. And the, the lack of windows, maybe it does call out for a little something extra so that it's not just the flat wall, but you really can't see it from Line Street. It's not going to show back there. I'm not sure what West Side Boulevard is going to look like, though. Um, <clears throat> there's fencing. Uh, could, do you have a picture of the West Side Boulevard yes. side? Is there is there fencing proposed there? On, on the West Side Boulevard yeah. part? Um, there is going to be a setback for the parking area right. um, along, oh, you just passed it, it's the set line, right there. Yeah. So, so we will have, we will have the dedication approximately right. 42 feet or so um, from Westside Boulevard into the site um, at this. It's just all open though, right? There's correct, no correct. It just opens up and go into the parking lot. Correct. We'll have the parking area and we'll have the bioretention area, which is going to be a dual use with, with landscaped and um, barbecue um, areas for as a as a well, public the, open space. The, the West View has the window. It's not as blank as the e east side, the East View. For um, for which units? Units A and B or Unit C? Uh, the 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 two that are facing the, that are near West Side Boulevard. Mm -hmm. They have windows, but the east d does not. Correct. That's correct. But you can't see the east because it's behind the other single-family dwelling that, that's there. The only view that you would have would be of Building B, and that would be from Line Street. Okay. Uh, because if we look at the site plan, you can see that there is this driveway, right. and you would be able to see a section which is the east side, and there's yes. there's no window on that side either. Correct. On those. Yes. I'm not so concerned about the Line Street side, but I am concerned about the West Side Boulevard side, which is that west. Well, it has the windows. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah, it's fine for me. Okay. So, um, any other questions or comments? From the commission? No. Okay, uh, we'll open the public hearing at uh, 635. Any speaker cards? There are no speaker cards. We do have the project engineer at present if she wants to address the commission. Or? Do you have any questions? I am Ann Hall with San Benito Engineering, since Abraham mentioned I was here. I am available if you have questions for the. I don't, uh, although yeah. I will tell you, I think this will be a nice improvement. I used to grit my teeth going on West Side Boulevard with those big blue posts for all that time, and then they finally fenced it, and it was better. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this, so thank you for coming forward. No problem. Okay. Anybody else?
There are no further speaker cards. Okay, so we'll Madam close Chair. the public hearing at 6.35 and bring it back to the commission for any discussion. Any questions? Discussion? Okay, so I guess we'll entertain a motion on the minor subdivision first. Yes, please. I'll move that we approve site and architectural. We're going to do the minor subdivision. Minor, minor subdivision, subdivision okay. please. Uh, the minor subdivision PC resolution 215-32. Yes. And I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passed. For the minor subdivision, I'll entertain a motion for the site and architectural. I'll make that motion for the approval of site and architectural review 2015-7, PC resolution 2015-33. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nay. Motion passed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next hearing. We have conditional use permit 2015-6 for planned unit development and a tentative map, 2014-1, uh, For the, it's called the cottages, and it's presented by Patrick and Linda Dyke. They're requesting approval of a conditional use permit for the planned unit development for a tentative map to subdivide a five-acre parcel into 39 lots at 1051 South Street, near the intersection of West, by West Side Boulevard. They're located in R1 LPZ, that's a low density residential performance overlay zone. May we have the staff report, please? Yes. The applicant is requesting approval of a major subdivision and conditional use permit for a planned unit development, be a total of 37 units, encompassing five acres in the R1 LPZ, low density residential performance overlay zoning district, located south of South Street, west of Westside Boulevard, north of Steinbeck Drive, and east of Robert Drive. The average single family lot would be 3,054 square feet, and the minimum lot size would be 2,502 square feet. The tentative map has a density of 7.5 dwelling units per acre. The proposed setbacks are as follows. For interior lots, the front setback would be 10 feet, front at the, at the garage, 17 feet, the side yard setback is proposed at four feet. The rear yard setback is proposed at 10 feet. For corner lots, the proposed setback would be 10 feet for the front at the residence. Uh, front at the garage would be 17 feet. The side yard would be four feet. Side yard at the corner portion of the lot would be proposed at 14 feet. And then the rear yard, 10 feet. Access to the site would be provided by a new roadway connection from South Street. The applicant would need to provide an additional emergency vehicle access for the site at the proposed future road connection at the southern portion of the site. The emergency access would need to be provided from the street stub out directly to Westside Boulevard. South Street is a two-lane collector road with travel lanes extending east and west. The project would include frontage improvements to South Street, such as sound walls, sidewalks, curbs, and gutters. The current Park Facility Master Plan recommends the development of five-acre neighborhood parks within walking distance of half mile. The City of Hollister Planning Commission approved tentative map 2014-4, known as Apricot Lane, located approximately a quarter mile southwest of the project site. Apricot Lane was approved with a neighborhood park component at the western edge of Summer Drive. Thanks, Joe. Per City of Hollister Planning Commission Resolution Number 2014-1, the property the minimum lot size for tenant map number 2014-1. Although the cottages subdivision proposes small for minimum lot size. It still conforms to the R1 of the Hollister Municipal Code. The project is consistent with. Fiber optic conduits shall be underground to serve the 
policy 3.2 street trees because the development lots however there still be single family application two days ago. I have reviewed the details of the application with Ann Hall. The proposed design satisfies the concerns that we have raised earlier. It provides separate ingress and egress routes for our parcel, which was our main concern earlier. We would draw attention to two items. One, we believe that earthwork spoils generated during installation of off-site improvements on the dike parcel will necessitate a retaining wall of some height along our common boundary if their spoils will remain on site. We want to ensure there is wording in the tentative map conditions that provides for the installation of a retaining wall under the future, fen under the future fences separating our two parcels if their site has to be raised to accommodate their spoils. We intend to file a tentative map application as soon as their tentative map is approved, allowing our earthwork requirements to be known shortly. And we'll be preparing our map also. We would, we would ask that the condition be added to their tentative map that if we fence along our common boundary does not require them to install a retaining wall that we be allowed to incorporate a retaining wall in their fence design at our expense. This would avoid tearing down their fence in the near future and reinstalling a retaining wall slash fence if only our earthwork required a retaining wall. Two, we request confirmation that the setbacks approved for the dike parcel will be applicable to our property when we develop. <coughs> As discussed in our meeting, we intend to, mir to mirror and back up the nine lots in the dike parcel along with our common boundary. Let me know if we need to submit the above items separately to the Planning Commission or that you will incorporate our comments as part of your presentation. We will forward the above comments to Jim Brennan as well as Ann Hall. We will not be able to attend the meeting due to our son's wedding next weekend on the East Coast. Let me know if we need to do anything further alex the city's response is as follows hi hi alex after discussing with the engineering department the requirement of a retaining wall or the possibility of a retaining wall does not belong in the conditions no property can no property can grade onto another property without their permission this will require a cooperative effort between the two property owners no condition is necessary regarding comment number two below regarding setbacks Approved setbacks for one project does not, cannot be given to another project because the other project must formally request approval through a formal application and go through the same, same public hearing process. Hope this information helps. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Sincerely, Abraham Prado, City of Hollister Development Services. With this, staff recommends the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving conditional use permit 2015-6 for a planning development and tentative map 2014-1, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolutions. Do any questions for staff? Any questions? Okay, having no questions, we'll open the public hearing at 6.45. Any speaker cards? There are no speaker cards for this item, uh, Madam Chair. However, the applicant and the uh, applicant's engineer is here to address any questions. It's a closer next Sorry. time. Ann Hall, on behalf of the applicant, um, I'm just available if you have questions about the project. 
I don't have any questions. Of you, anybody have any questions, comments? Thank you, Anne, for coming forward. Uh, having no other comments, we'll close the public hearing at 6:45. Bring it back to the commission. Um, I do want you to read that one more time. The response that Abraham gave. Sure, just once. On just the uh, concern number one. Sure. For concern there. number one would be for the um, for the wall. retaining wall. Read that again one more time. Okay, I'm just gonna, okay. Um, after discussing with the engineering department, the requirement of a retaining wall or the possibility of a retaining wall does not belong in the conditions. No property can grade onto another property without their permission. This will require cooperative effort between the two property owners. No condition is necessary. Okay. So that so they're not going to create any hazard that's going to require a retaining wall on on the dike property. If if it does, Commissioner uh, Lenora, then at that point, um, with the engineering department, they they will indicate whether whether a retaining wall is, is uh, needed, and then they could work together to to get that at, at final map. Well, is there a grade level difference? At this well, point, it's it's gener it's the site is generally flat all all throughout. Yeah. Then probably a retaining wall wouldn't be. Uh, May not be. Yeah. You're right. That was my only question. Okay, um, any other questions? So, any other questions, Chris? Uh, I guess we'll do the, uh, we'll entertain a motion on the uh, conditional use permit first. Yes, correct. Chair entertains a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve conditional use permit 2015-6 for plan unit development and PC resolution 215, 2015-34, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 34. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion carries. Uh, I will entertain a motion for the, um, the tentative map. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nay. Motion carries. Project is approved. Thank you. Okay. 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 As well, you did last time as well. Okay. So now we're down to three. Okay, item number five. It's a conditional use permit, 2015-1, for a planned unit development, and also a tentative map, 2015-1, uh, for the Saddlebrook development. We also have an addendum to the mitigated dec declaration for the previously approved tentative map, 2012-1, which is referred to as Rakovich 22. The application is presented by BMC Promise Way LLC. They're requesting approval of a CUP for a plan unit development uh, for a tentative map to subdivide the 4.56 acre part, and it, which was part of an overall 22.25 acre site currently being developed with single family homes east of San Benito Street Extension and north of Southside. Uh, the zoning is in the R1 LPZ, that's Low Density Residential Performance Overlay Zone. Um, that's going to propose uh, 43 small lots for single family detached residential units. The property owner has previously received, did you want to present this or do I need to read the whole thing? So Feel free to direct us to present, we will do it. Yeah, if, if just like. go ahead because they Thank don't you. need to hear it twice, I don't think. <laughs> we will, we will summarize it right now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam so Chair. We'll leave it to you to present the staff report. Now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. The applicant is requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a plan unit development with a tentative map to subdivide approximately 4.56 acres of land into four, 47 lots, consisting of 43 lots for single family detached units and four non buildable parcels for roads and open space in the R1 LPZ low density residential zoning district located east of Sabio Street and north of Southside Road. 
The 4.56 acre property is within an area of 22.25 acres, formerly known as Rakovich 22. The applicant is also requesting an addendum to the CEQA mitigated negative declaration for previously approved tentative map 2012-1, Rakovich 22. The minimum lot size would be 2,635 square feet and the average lot size would be 3,160 square feet. The gross density proposed is 5.57 dwelling units per acre. The following setbacks are proposed for the 40 Access to the site will be provided by, provided by way of new roadway connection to Saddlebrook Street. Saddlebrook Street extends north-south direction towards the north and south end of the project site. Heartland Drive is a two-lane local street extending in the east-west direction towards the east end of the project site. Heartland Drive is proposed to extend into the project site providing vehicular access and would be improved with curb gutter sidewalk along the north and south side. The current Park Facility Master Plan recommends the development of five acre neighborhood parks within a walking distance of a half mile. On August 28, 2014, the City of Hollister Planning Commission approved tentative map 2014-2, known as the Award Homes slash Lad Ranch, bordering the southern port prop bordering the exact southern property line of the project site. If you can see up on the screen where the cursor is, that's that's exactly where the Saddlebrook proposal will be. We'll be bordering this lot 81 and 82. So a connection to the parkway could be made at this point here. The city, count, the city council and planning commission have expressed the need for the implementation of neighborhood parks. A condition of approval has been placed on the draft resolution that required that prior to recordation of the final map, the applicants can, would be required to work with staff to implement some sort of recreational amenity on the retaining the remaining vacant parcel bordering the western property line. On July 20th, 2009, City Council adopted City Council Resolution 2009-125, acknowledging the receipt of proposals for the Round 1 of Measure U Growth Management Program allocations and awarded 175 residential allocations, including 100 residential allocations from the affordable housing pool to the Rakovich 22 property. On December 19th, 2013, the City of Hollister Planning Commission approved Planning Commission Resolution 2000, number 2013-31, approving the Rakovich 22 tentative map, number 2012-1, to subdivide the total 22.25 acres into 81 single-family residential lots, which are currently under construction, with a remainder parcel designated and analyzed per CEQA standards for the future 100 affordable multi-family residential units. The applicant obtained a final map approval and the building permits from the city of Hollister and is currently making improvements to the site. The Saddlebrook subdivision before you tonight also conforms to the City of Hollister general plan designation of low density residential, which allows up to eight dwelling units per acre because although the gross density of the Saddlebrook subdivision proposes 11 dwelling units per acre, the overall 22.25 acre project site would have a density of approximately 5.57 dwelling units per acre. The 2009 housing element of the general plan has anticipated 101 housing units on the project site based on the city's general plan designation of low density residential and the site having no development constraints such as being on, on an identified fault zone or a sloped area or a hillside. The Saddlebrook subdivision proposes 43 single family detached units on small lots and it is a part of an already approved 81 single family residential subdivision for a total of 124 residential units. Therefore, the Saddlebrook subdivision would comply with the housing element on the number of housing units anticipa anticipated for the site. In January 2015, <clears throat> the applicant submitted an application for, for the development of 43 single family residential units on, on this close to eight acre parcel close to four acre parcel. The proposed Saddlebrook project site was proposed as a remainder parcel as part of the 18.37 acre Rakovich subdivision project approved by the city. As part of that approval, the city adopted a mitigated negative declaration pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act for the entire project site. <clears throat>
which analyzed the proposed Saddlebrook site for development of 100 multifamily units. The purpose of this addendum tonight before you to the Rakovich subdivision project for the mitigative negative de declaration is to analyze the modification to the project's development assumptions. Based on the review, the addendum demonstrates that the proposed Saddlebrook project will not result in new significant impacts that and that none of the conditions described in the CEQA guidelines per section 15162 calling for the preparation of a subsequent EIR or negative declaration have occurred. At its regular meeting of February 26, 2015, just a few months ago, your planning commission did a preliminary review of the proposal to modify the awarded 100 affordable multifamily residential units anticipated for this parcel. The determination made by the planning commission that night was not in support of this change. Following a joint city council planning commission special meeting held on April 13, 2015, the concerns expressed at, at the joint meeting was that a need for a variety of housing types, which included affordable housing, but also small lot development. Since this meeting, the applicant desired to pursue the request for a tentative map approval. The city received one email on August 27, 2015 from Mr. Alex Siwak, which reads as follows, and also from Ms. Ingrid Siwak. The email was provided to the commissioners. There's also copies in the front lobby. The email reads, hi, Abraham. Thank you for forwarding the proposed tentative map for Saddlebrook to Ann Hall. It does not appear that the applicant is being required to improve the easterly half of San Mateo Street, extending from the Lad Lane Ranch subdivision to the southerly limit of our parcel APN 020-170-041. In our tentative map application, we are being required to improve our frontage along Samio Street, including an extension of an eight inch water line that Lad Ranch is installing along their frontage. Please confirm that if the Saddlebrook project will not be required to install any improvements along their Samio Street frontage, the city will, at a minimum, extend the 8-inch water line from Lad Ranch to provide a hookup for the commencement, commencement point of our water line at our southern property margin. As you know, we are out of town and unable to attend the meeting. Please pass this note to the Planning Commission and enter it into their record. Alex and Ingrid Siwak. The city's in response to Mr. and Ms. Siwak's comments. The Saddlebrook project does not front San Diego Street with the exception of the proposed emergency vehicle access only. The city is looking to the possibility of abandoning the area between San Diego Street and the Saddlebrook project. At that point, the city would determine who would be required to implement the frontage improvements at San Diego Street. With this, staff recommends the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal and approve the following subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolutions. First would be the addendum to the mitigated negative declaration for tentative map 2012-1, Brakovich 22. The second would be conditional use permit 2015-1 for plan unit development. And the third would be tentative map 2015-1. Are there any questions for staff? I have a question. Does anybody else want to go first? Uh, uh, what's the status of the allocations? I mean, we know they have 100 for affordable housing. So have they, they haven't gained the other, the allocations they need outside of the affordable housing pool. They're separate, correct? Right now they do have 100 for the affordable housing um, component, but the, um, for the other ones, I'm not sure if, if Mr. Sullivan would like to address that allocation requirements. The allocation requirements are even on their face, they, they mean nothing. Uh, and they're being suspended because the underlying power they had came from Measure U, which is sunsetted and has not been extended by the council. Yeah, I understand that, but they're not, sun they're not suspended yet, the but program. There was, but but the, the, right, I know that. But even, even when they did, all they allowed you to do was to move forward in the processing. They, they gave you no vested rights. Right. And they also but did not still, require. But still, we have the allocation process in place still. Sure, but it did not. All it allowed you to do was to proceed. With well, now, number. back in the day, they did give allocations that exceeded the limit that they were going to issue. So it, it did used to work that way. And right. I know it doesn't now, but we haven't, we haven't 
taken that away yet. So you're the city attorney, you're saying it's okay then that we have these 100 units that essentially are not allocated for market rate homes. It's It came out of the affordable, no, so I, it's I, a I moot point. So I, under, I understand. Yeah. And, and with the board situated or commission as it is, it requires a unanimous vote. Oh, it does? Yes. Oh, oh for the quorum. Yeah. Right, okay. Any other questions? Okay, having no other questions, we'll open the public hearing uh, at uh, seven o'clock. Do we have any speaker cards? We do, Madam Chair. We have Holly McWinney. Good evening, Planning Commission and Madam Chair. My name is Holly McWinney. I'm um, the director for um, Dreams and Visions Community Development. Um, my address is 351 Trespinos Road. Um, I have some questions um, regarding the allocation. Um, I have had, well, I've been doing this for a while now, almost 10 years, uh, helping people purchase homes, first time home buyers. Uh, in February, we had a meeting where over 800 people showed up looking for affordable housing. And I know, you know, a lot of things have changed in the last 10, 15, 20 years that I've been here in Hollister, but I'm trying to find out why this keeps coming up regarding the allocation when, as an advocate, I constantly hear from people that I live here, I was raised here, I can't afford to even buy here. We have over 200 buyers that are ready to purchase for a long time, some of them a year, some of them longer than a year, and we haven't been able to find them any housing, and we keep saying, well, there's more coming, there's more coming. Well, it appears like there's not more coming, it seems like there's more that's being taken away. So my question is for um, the, um, the parties involved that are building or are asking to have the 43 small single family homes, are they going to be market rate? Are they gonna be below market rate? Are they gonna be something that helps the residents of San Miguel County actually own a home? Again, it's not their fault that they haven't been able to own home, but they can help the process. And my only thing here today is that, uh, when are we uh, as a county gonna start thinking more about the mission of helping the residents and not about the money? Thank you for your comments. If the applicant is here, I do have a question. Oh, we have a couple more speaker cards. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Me. That's okay. Uh, Sunny Flores. Sorry, Sunny. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. I'm Sunny Flores. I'm with Community Services Development. I think I'm going to say a lot of the same things that uh, you know Holly just said. Um, our concern is about the affordable housing. Um, we've got over 200 people on a waiting list looking for places. If we get rid of the 100 allocations for affordable housing, we'll never get those back. It'll be um, issued through another process. I think if they were issued as affordable housing, they should stay with that, otherwise reapply. I know you said that the rules have changed or have gone away, then maybe those allocations would have gone away with that. The allocations um, if they are just get, get, you know, yeah. Well, if the allocations, that's, uh, um, to hear they're, they're meaningless is, well, the yeah, allocations were always plan. intended for infrastructure. Yes. And you know, we, we had to yeah. we had to limit it because it was so yeah. much, but now that the development is, is so down in numbers. Yeah. But at that time, that wasn't the allocations issued separate from all they the were, rest of the allocations in addition? The affordable they were done ones? Before. Yeah. They were done before you applied, and it was, right. it was a scoring factor here and in the county that would allow you to then then bring the, the projects that served the maximum public utility, the mm -hmm. maximum public needs, mm -hmm. kind of a pre-apply, a pre-application beauty contest. Because there was so many, we couldn't do them all. Yeah. So that's how okay. that's how they did it. Well, I think we should go back to look at, at how the allocations are issued. If they're going to still be issued, or if they were issued that way, I'd like to see them continue to be affordable. Well, I did favor that program because yeah. I thought it brought a, brought a better product for us. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sam Chuck. Uh, good evening, uh, council members. My name is Sam Chuck. I'm an attorney, but that's not necessarily why I'm here. I represent the Rykoviches, George and Lucille, and I've known them since I've been a kid. And I, I'm here basically for two reasons. Um, first, um, 
George, unfortunately, has been very ill, and so he couldn't be here. So he asked me to come down and just speak on his behalf to say thank you for your attention to it. Um, the family's owned this property for a long time, and um, <coughs> you know they've, they've done their best to try to find a developer for it who has done a great job with the first phase. Um, the second reason I'm here is George wanted me to especially thank the staff who worked diligently through the prior hearings, the concerns, addressing them, and making sure that everything was in compliance with the current zoning, because as I'm sure you know from reading the report, although there was stuff back in 2000, 2009 when the general plan was done, it did it with the density, that, which is what this plan now matches. So the goal all along was to match what the general plan was. And we just wanted to especially thank the staff, because they've done a lot of work on looking at this property. So we just want to say thanks. Thank you. Excuse me, I have no other speaker cards. Okay. I have a question of the applicant, whoever would like to answer my question. So when we left off last time, and I remember, what's your name again? My name is Michael Cady. I'm with UCP Benchmark. Yes. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. So I wanted to know, how did the talks go with the nonprofits that were going to meet with the Rakoviches or, or yourself, and they were going to discuss it? Did, did that occur? Was there any meetings that they said they were going to meet with you? Uh, I, we did not have any meetings with the nonprofits. Uh, they very well could have contacted the Rakoviches, but the, the, the property essentially has been under contract. So, so the Rakoviches are, are they're still the owners. And that's what he said. That's, but, that's correct. There was there was no no meeting that you know of uh, that they had with the the, Ra the Rakoviches. I'm sure that they contacted the Rakoviches about the about the availability of the property, but the, the okay. property's not available. Okay, it's not available. That's correct. The property is okay. under contract. Right. Okay. Um, and that was my question. I just wondered if you had any insight to that. Sonny, did, were you part of the meetings? Okay. Thank, thank you so yes. much. Any other speakers? Having no other speakers, we'll close the public hearing at 7.08. Bring it back to the commission for discussion, questions comments well, my I talked to Abraham this afternoon um, my understanding got so out of the just so I understand the process 244 per year of that 50 are designated as, as affordable right Commissioner Harry yes um, right now we do have or prior to it sunsetted it was 244 a year we, we still we're still processing the allocations because that was a direction that we got from the city council. So 244 per year, um, and of those, I believe it's 50 or close to 50 uh, for affordable housing that we designate. And um, like like City Attorney Sullivan was indicating, it is it is a point system, um, and um, the if if the applicant has more amenities such as open space, affordable housing, ha the general plan has has indicated that. Affordable housing is is a big need in the community. Um, so if it has some of these things that are addressed, especially like in our in our um, housing element or our general plan, then it scores higher. And um, and yeah, so so it's 244 with with about approximately 50 or so that are more geared towards the affordable housing pool. That's correct. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't support this at all. I, you know, this was brought to us, affordable housing, you know, my position. It needs to be spread out around the community. We need affordable housing. I, I, I don't know, you know, as far as I'm concerned, no. Okay. Um. I just, I guess my, you know, I, I, again, it goes back to what I said four months ago, you know, that I, I much, as much as anybody I understand when you're in business it's it's really hard I'm sure to, to, to be able to build something and make a profit and it's hard to justify doing something like that but you know I guess there's there's an element of me that just goes you know there's there's got there's there's got to be a way to you know to find a way to to do something and and then I think about the precedent I mean if we, if we say okay well we're going to take this and we're going to say remove that element then what happens the next time 
You know, I mean, you know, if we have, and maybe I'm not processing or thinking about this the right way, but I'm thinking, okay, we go down the road of, okay, we, we award 50 affordable housing units to somebody or somebody applies for that, and then something changes, then what? Uh, you know, I just, I, I wonder about the precedent that we set. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a tough situation anyway, you, you cut it. I mean, it's, I, you know, I understand that, that much of it. That's, I'm just reluctant to, to change what we did four months ago or whatever it was, February. Chair, Chair, may I um, give a little bit of, again, some history on, on this and where we're at? So the commission has kind of the, the full sort of story. Yes, please. <clears throat> So when affordable housing, uh, we started doing a lot of affordable housing here probably in the early 80s. Um, and it was due to obviously having the redevelopment agency. Um, that was the primary source of affordable housing for not only this community, but almost every community in the state of California, with the exception of some folks that received uh, CDBG monies as, as an entitlement, okay? We weren't in that situation. So for roughly 30 years, we built affordable housing. And this city's redevelopment agency board, almost the entire history, was very pro-affordable housing. We superseded every expectation that was put on us by the state to, afford, to, to basically provide um, those affordable housing opportunities um, with self-help, with multifamily stuff. Um, we, we, we generated way more than what our quote unquote fair share was according to our redevelopment agency. They took that away. At the same time when they took that away, we had this allocation process. We went through two rounds, right? We noticed that they're coming out of the recession and prior to the sunset of measure U, there was not the desire or the need or the willingness by a lot of developers to even go after an allocation because there were so many people that, or so many allocations that were already allocated. I asked Jill the other day for the numbers. There's 2,700 units allocated. That's a lot of units that are being allocated. And you're right, you can't force a developer, you can't force a property owner to build an affordable housing project if they don't have the money to do it. So I think what you heard, again, kind of what I was hearing when we had the joint meeting was this, is that it is a different type of housing product. It is not a 6,000 square foot product with a 25 or 3,000 square foot house on it. It's not gonna be base priced at $550,000 now, which most of the stuff is. Um, if it's at 350 or 400, you've, you've created or you've met a mark, uh, there's still a market here, regardless if it's affordable or semi-affordable or just a little bit of above middle class but not able to buy the 550,000 square foot house. I think we are doing what we're supposed to be doing by advocating and providing a comprehensive housing approach. It's not perfect. It's just like our multifamily stuff, our apartment stuff. You guys have approved, sorry, the commission has approved several site and architecturals lately for apartments. You don't see one of them started because nobody lends on them anymore. And that's where our problem is. is so we can sit here and again say that we want affordable housing, we want apartments, we want this, we want that. Of course we do. But if it never happens, we don't get it anyway. And I think that was one of the things that I heard coming out of it is that, you know, 40 units or 50 units or even 100 units of something that, that meets a different sort of a market is still something that's a benefit to the city. It does provide, provide affordable housing for somebody. Right. You know, they're not paying rent in a place that you can't even find a place to rent in town. You know? Exactly. Right? So you have multiple families living in the same house or multi-generations living in the same house. And I would think that we would be a healthier community if we didn't have that situation. If everybody was able to invest in a property and begin their, their you know, uh, home buying experience and, and moving up after a certain amount of years, I wouldn't suspect that people buying, and 
uh, Michael might kill me after I say this, but I wouldn't suspect that you're seeing people that buy these homes going to be there for 10 years. They're going to use this as a stepping stone Step to move up. Starter house. Okay. Oh, Thanks see, now he's going to. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. I, I was going to make a point that Billy's going to make. It's. it's um, I understand the need for BMRs. That was the whole reason why there was a joint study session, the difficulties with the with the dissolution of the redevelopment agencies. I, mean, I used to work for a nonprofit developer. I know how difficult they are to build and finance, and it's gotten a lot more difficult since the agencies gone by because the agencies for the local cities have always made up the gap financing. So talk to Gabriel, you can talk to whoever you want. And, and I do, I do want to piggyback on, on Billy's point. I, there's a certain irony in the fact, um, I know everybody thinks that there was 100 units there, there's allocations, and they've been talking about it for a decade. The bottom line is there's a lot of allocations on that list that they just put up that have never got built and have changed. And unfortunately, that's the reality. And, and what we're talking about building are brand new single family detached units for less than $400,000. I mean, there, there are realtors in here, and I don't, I don't know if you can find that in Hollister right now, a brand new single family detached home for less than 400,000. I, I totally agree that there's need for, uh, you know, uh, BMRs of a greater depth, but there's other issues with that. And I, I don't think by turning down these 43, you're gonna get that 100. And I do think that deserves consideration. I think this is a family that's owned this piece of property for a great deal of time, and it's not come to fruition, and we are pr proposing a project that conforms to zoning, conforms to general plan, conforms to the housing element. It's not, we're, we're not asking for anything out of the ordinary, and I think ultimately we end up with, with an affordable project. So I, uh, I'm certainly, I, I just ask for that consideration. I understand your stances. I just ask you to give that some thought. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Well, I'm going to say my comments. On this staff report, under the multifamily listing, I personally was involved in six out of the eight subdivisions in the approval process. I've been in planning a long time. It was always 6,000 square feet, 6,000 square feet. And that's all we knew. So then they started proposing the smaller lots, and, and, and they got smaller, and they got smaller and smaller. And when we met with the council, I understand we need an affordable project, pro uh, product. 6,000 square feet is a big lot. So I had to step back and, and rethink what I've known for two or three decades and realize that, yes, we do need to bring a more affordable product. Uh, a smaller lot would be good. Even though I don't like it, I understand how it markets. Um, however, out of these eight sub, out of these eight things and the whatever 2,700 allocations, we got 100 affordable in the west of Fairview. So we have a lot of smaller lot sizes that brings an affordable project. But let me say this: now that we don't have redevelopment, it's going to be obviously even tougher to get any developer to agree to try to build affordable housing. I feel like if we don't at least take a stand here on this commission, because obviously you have the, uh, the option of appealing, uh, and we know, we know the, di the direction the council wants, but I think myself and I think this commission has also seen the newer side and, and what we need to do, and, and the evidence is what we've already approved. So we have changed, and we have considered affordability However, I don't see anything affordable, and I do, I'm glad to hear that you're saying it's under 400,000, because I'm not sure the median, the median housing price is. Do we know off the top of our heads? No, I mean, that, that's good news. You made me feel better when, when you said that, because that is affordable. Um, but I think that if we don't stand our ground, we're never going to get any, and, and I know you'll have the ability to, to probably proceed with it, but for myself personally, I'm going to have to stand with uh, the other t two commissioners here commenting that I don't want to pull back from trying to get affordable housing, and I'm going to have to put that on the, 
the uh, council to, to make that decision because uh, I just see that we have a great variety already going. We just don't have any affordable units. And I don't know, won't pencil. I'm sorry to hear that. So I'm going to have to, you know, stop with those comments. That's my feelings on it. Um, I think we need to address the the less fortunate in our community. We hear it all the time. I'm saying that we need to, I'm going to say that I want to pull the line. I, I want it to be affordable units. Um, so that's my comments. Any other comments? I, I echo uh, your exactly. Also, I, if I was uh, now trying to buy a home, no way, 400,000, that's, that's not affordable, not to me. That's, you know, no way. I, I know, you know, people, and I've talked to them, and, and, you know, they're working two jobs, two, three jobs, just to get they, into a home. Right. You know, and, and, and very no time for their family, and they're not seeing their family, living with their parents right now to save money. Uh, you know, we have to take a stand. I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry, but we have to take a stand. We have to say no. You know, we, we built out so much. I watched all these orchards around town become houses, and, and it uh, just, you know, these large companies made a lot of money and they went away and and now we were stuck we're stuck with the problems you know water sewer um and, and I, you know i'm just saying no more we need affordable housing we need it spread out around town that's my other comment we it's, don't if we, we have we don't a perfect opportunity it there. Right here, it's all going to be on the west side and and we can't it's a good lot it's a great lot i don't see what the problem is there uh, the, the, the services are there. It's close to downtown. Um, yeah, I think the location is, is perfect uh, for, for affordable housing. Uh, I did want to also say that I don't have a problem with the addendum to the mitigated neck deck because obviously Tad Stern is right. There is less impact. There is less impact with the less units and, and the less residents there. So that's not an issue for me, but, but the affordable component is. Okay, so um, if we're done discussing, no, what is it? then I will uh, entertain a motion if, if somebody wants to make a motion. Yes. Uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Sullivan, uh, do, we, do we have the ability to approve, or is it a moot point? Do we have the ability to do a mitigated neck neck? Uh, uh, the addendum, uh, or do we have to, if we're leaning towards the denial side, we, you, do we have to do all three like that? No. You can, you can certify the, the CEQA, or you can just, you know, you can deny that you, you, Could don't, be, okay. you don't have to go through all the steps. You can, you can just deny. But we can approve the addendum. Sure. Okay. So with that said, I'd like to make a motion uh, approving the addendum to the mitigated neg negative declaration. Okay, so we have a, a, a motion and a second to approve the mitigated negative declaration by adopting resolution number PC 2015 which one is it? 33, 34? 36. 36, excuse me, 36. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so all those are nay, all those nay, nay. Okay, so um, the motion fails due to a lack of a quorum on the vote. A majority. Lack a, a lack of a majority. Uh, excuse me, lack yeah. of majority. Okay, so as well, um, I'll entertain a motion for the conditional use permit. I would move that we not approve conditional use permit 2015-1 PC. Resolution of 36. Well, there's no resolution. No it's resolution. just a, yes. So, it's so just what you would denial. do is you, you probably, we haven't gone through this a lot with you folks, huh? <laughs> so no, if you don't I say anything, know. that it it fails for lack of a motion, and okay. you're fine. So you, and right. nobody has to say anything. Okay. Uh, okay. That's probably the best way to go about it. Okay. So then we have a consensus. Okay. So it fails for a lack of motion. It's denied for a lack of motion. Yep. That's it? That's it. Okay. Also, um, give the Ragoviches my deep respect. They are wonderful people. I've noticed that they've done so much good for this community and, and the stuff they've done for the youth. I had a hard time with this, but I can't judge development on how much respect I have or don't have. 
for somebody. But I wanted you to let them know that I do notice how much they do for the community. And I hope that they're able to solve this. And, and, and I won't be mad if it goes through because I do want good things for the Rakovich family, but I want good things for the, the disadvantaged here as well. And that's all. Okay, so moving on to um, um, public hearing number six, Title 17 Zoning Amendment Density. A resolution requesting to the City Council of the City of Hollister to adopt an ordinance to amend Title 17 Zoning to assure internal consistency for minor clarification and correction to residential densities. It's in a categorical exemption for CEQA. May we have the staff report, please? Yes. In a continued effort of implementing the Hollister General Plan oh. goals of Paul. Oh, excuse me, oh. Gabriel. Yes. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Thank you <laughs> very much. Good job. I almost, <laughs> I almost went by you. I said, wait a minute. Okay, so they're going to present the staff report for the item number six. In a continued effort of implementing the Hollister General Plan goals and policies, the Development Services Department has been preparing revisions to the current standards for residential general development in the Chapter 17.04.030 Residential General Development Standards of the Hollister Municipal Code. The attached ordinance includes minor clarifications, corrections, and amendments for residential densities to assure internal <coughs> consistency within the Municipal Code. The medium density residential designation of the general plan allows 8 to 12 dwelling units per acre and is consistent with the R3 and OTM medium density residential zoning district of the Hollister Municipal Code. Currently, the R3 and OTM medium density residential zoning district 5,000 square feet for one residential unit, 8,000 square feet for two residential units, 11,000 square feet for three residential units, and parcels of 11,000 square feet or more shall be developed at a ratio of three dwelling units for the first 11,000 square feet, and 3,600 square feet for each additional unit. The amendment to section 1704030 would allow for the following, would be 5,000 square feet for one residential unit, 6,800 square feet for two residential units, 10,000 square feet for three residential units and parcels of 10,000 square feet or more shall be developed at a ratio of three dwelling units for the first 10,000 square feet and 3,600 square feet for each additional unit. In summary, the amendments to the <coughs> R3 and OTM zoning districts are as follows. Two residential units would be allowed to be built on a 6,800 square foot lot instead of an 8,000 square foot lot. Three residential units would be allowed to be built on a 10,000 square foot lot rather than a, an 11,000 square foot lot. Thank you, Joe. And um, as you know, commissioners, we uh, did discuss this item at the at the July Planning Commission meeting, and uh, we were requested by by you to bring it back formally for the August Planning Commission meeting, and that's what we're doing today. And um, Joe just went over the R3 OTM standards, and I'm just going to briefly go over the. R4 high density residential zoning amendments and also the OTH. And very briefly, in summary, the amendments of the R4 and OTH zoning districts are as follows. One residential unit would be allowed to be built on a 4,000 square foot lot. Uh, two residential units would be allowed to be built on a 6,000 square foot lot instead of an 8,000 square foot lot as it is now. And three residential units would be allowed to be built on an 8,000 square foot lot rather than a 9,000 square foot lot as it is now. It's all still consistent with the general plan um, of the City of Hollister. So with this, staff recommends that the City of Hollister Planning Commission approve a resolution recommending to the City Council approval of an ordinance amending Title 17 zoning of the Hollister Municipal Code. Are there any questions for staff? When we have the two residential units, on one lot, does that kick in a requirement for landscape or is it just considered the same as single family dwelling where we don't oversee any design or the, they'll have to get still a site and architectural? Not, not for a second unit, Commissioner Lenore, um, but we do still, the landscape requirements are do need to be met 
If it's at ground level, they have to have at least a minimum of 100 square feet. If it's at, at the second story level, at least 64 square feet. Um, and then also, I believe it's 500 square feet for each unit for public open space. I mean, so it all has to fit with the any, uh, dedicated areas. Absolutely. Any open space, any landscape areas, it still needs to meet that. Three units uh, or more would require to have site and architectural and will okay. be brought before you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's all the questions I had. Any other questions? Okay, so having no other questions, we'll open the public hearing at 7.30. Do we have any speaker cards? I have no speaker cards. Okay, having no one wishing to speak, we'll close the public hearing at 7.30 and bring it back to the commission for discussion and comments. I think that this is a wonderful opportunity to bring about some affordable units. I do. You get the smaller unit, you get those rear units. They're affordable. This is another component that we've now, maybe if we approve this, have taken part in providing an affordable component for the community. We talked about this a long time, implying that we were going to try to adjust this. There's a lot of folks right on that right on that bubble they just barely <laughs> would miss it by 100 square feet yeah. yeah so and then we'll also alleviate some of the legal non-conforming that's costs, correct which is which is good for them that's correct you know, good for the property owners that's all the comments i have any other comments chair will entertain a motion i make a motion to present uh, the title 17 zoning amendments uh, regarding density to City Council, Planning Commission Resolution. Uh, it'll be 2015-36 now. 36. Yes, correct. So. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passed. Okay, we have one new business item. We have growth management allocations 2015-2 presented by Highland Partners Group. They're requesting the remaining 28 residential allocations to a fully to a fully allocated approved tentative map 2015-2 known as Orchard Ranch. They have 53 total res residential units. Okay, the property consists of 11.48 acres. It's also located in the R1 LPZ, which is low density residential performance Overlay Zoning District, located on Buena Vista Road. May we have the staff report, please? Yes. So the applicant is requesting uh, their remaining 28 residential allocations. And this is for approximately the 11.48 acres of land that's designated low density residential. And this is to complete the previously approved tentative map 2015-2. Um, and also they received their LAFCO approval in July. So this is just to, they already have 25 allocations. And this, this is just to complete the total of the 53 units. Um, the property is off of Buena Vista and will extend San Lorenzo Drive, as you can see on the map up, um, before you on the screen. Um, so with this, staff recommends the Planning Commission adopt the resolution awarding the 28 residential allocations to Highland Partners Group Incorporated for a low-density residential development <coughs> to complete the approved tentative map 2015-2, which total of the 53 units. Any questions for staff? Is this the Gonzalez piece? Yes. Okay. Correct. I have no questions. Any questions? No. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion we approve growth management growth management allocations 215-2 PC resolution dash 37. 37. I'll, go ahead, go ahead. Gabriel. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion passed. Okay, do we have any um, department reports? I have a, just a couple of quick things. Um, just wanted to share with you some of the things that we have going on um, in the department and then also sort of in the parks <coughs> arena. Um, Mr. Uh, Chambliss is, is sort of in charge of our parks department down, down at the yard. Uh, we've been trying to make some improvements at several of the parks um, 
uh, as, as you may or may not know, the skateboard park recently completed its expansion, um, which is open and, and being used relatively heavily. Um, we have some uh, new additions over at the um, Valley View Park or Southeast Area Park, whichever mm -hmm. park you want to happen to call that. Um, there's some new gazebos and actually some new play structures down there. Um, we have a brand new, fairly large facility going up on Park Hill. Um, that's not quite finished yet. It's, a, it's probably at least a month or two away from, or probably closer to two months away. You may, <coughs> if you go up there, you'll notice the play structure is, is uh, I would say, mostly complete. However, um, there's some ADA issues that we're trying to deal with up there and address. We're going to have some um, ADA uh, uh, parking, new ADA parking um, stalls, uh, some ramps, uh, and make it accessible because the play structure actually is. There's a component of the play structure that is accessible for, um, for um, uh, uh, special needs children, which is, is uh, super cool. We're going through the process now of, of hopefully uh, cleaning up the bathrooms, and, and Park Hill is, is seeing a pretty big overhaul. Um, we just finished Junior Giants, which was a huge success for us in the recreation department. Um, almost 500 kids wow. uh, completed um, the, the program. Um, there's a huge reading component of that, which all the kids um, uh, completed as well. Um, it was very successful. Um, the Giants organization is actually fairly pleased with the city of Hollister, so that's good. Coupled with that is kind of the why I want to go back up to the Park Hill for just a, a quick second is we do have one ball field up there. Um, Buster Posey has a, a foundation also that uh, rehabilitates a baseball field and we're going to be applying for that and cool. crossing our fingers. That might be something that uh, uh, hopefully we, we score fairly well in and, and maybe we can have uh, that ball field completely redone and, and really sort of change the dyna dynamics on Park Hill and, and that's one of the, our big goals. Um, we know that some stuff up there has been going on for several years that's not the best and I think if we introduce a, a new uh, set of clientele up there um, we might be it. able to get uh, rid of the old clientele so that's hopefully yeah. that all works out and um, I encourage the and within the next few months when things are complete I encourage everybody who hasn't been to Park Hill go up there and visit it because it really is a gem and there's a lot of people in this community I don't think have actually ever really been up there and so I will I will continue to plug that park um, uh, we've had a couple of um, uh, recruiting, recruitments going on internally, some executive management positions. Um, we've made a decision on the new city clerk. Um, the new city clerk will be starting on Tuesday, September 9th. His name is Tom Graves. Um, he's coming from us uh, originally from Santa Cruz, uh, some special districts, but then most recently spent uh, a long period of time uh, with the city of San Jose. So we're fairly fortunate to have him, or really fortunate to have him. Um, I interviewed uh, that um, uh, I, there was also an interview that took place and uh, narrowed it down to two. We had those two folks um, come to the city of Hollister last Friday for my old position or, or the development services director, the person that will ultimately be sitting here. Um, I believe this morning I've made my decision. Um, so we're going to start doing some background checks and make sure that he's going, oh, he or she is going to, <laughs> um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, accept the position and, and, and move forward with that process. So, um, and we also have, of course, those that we just hired uh, Chief Bob Martin Del Campo, mm -hmm. um, a longtime uh, city resident and uh, actually was a former employee of ours, so he is our new chief. So at the executive management level, there's, there's been uh, some change and will continue to be some change, but um, so I'm looking forward to, to that and hopefully uh, we'll, do, we'll continue to do a good job for you. Oh, met with the owners of uh, Les Schwab today, or the property owners with Les Schwab. You may see that there's a huge delay, um, sort of in, in the opening. They were, it, it's all kind of a, a legal mess, but it sounds like it's finally getting um, ironed out. And our hopes is that they would actually be potentially breaking ground at the <coughs> end of September. And they've they got to try to beat the October mark. Um, so they're hopefully, hopefully uh, uh, everything's all um, dialed in by the middle of next month and then starting at the end of September. Um, and then, of course, uh, the Marriott is underway. It's, it's, about 60, it's about 60 days behind schedule at this no. point, um, quite frankly. But um, it's, uh, they have a, um, they're going to be moving a little bit quicker from here on out. So. How long does it take them to get build all that and get I mean, when would, when would they be open, you think? The, next the Marriott? Spring? You, uh, probably, I'm going to... They want to start going to six days a week. Um, they, they'll be probably working on Saturdays. Um, I'm guessing it's probably still seven, eight months out. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No worries. Remember, with any kind of construction project, which is a little bit frustrating for most people, is that you know once it starts going up, it looks like it should be done. But the finished work in a hotel mm -hmm. or motel is quite extensive. Oh, yeah. I mean, you saw what happened. To, I mean, with Dollar Tree, same thing. Mm -hmm. It kind of went up relatively quickly, and then all of a sudden, it's sitting there for what seems like for ages before they actually open. So um, yeah. it's going to be the same sort of thing with the hotel. And speaking of the Dollar Tree, that's a great addition. Oh yeah, I, I've actually been there a couple yeah. times now. <laughs> yeah, and 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 just uh, if I can comment on on your your report, I I would very much like to thank the council, and and in particular, I I think Mayor Velasquez, uh, definitely on the same page when it comes to parks, um, with him. I think they really opened their eyes up to, we needed to do something, and they did it. So excellent, and Park Hill is a jewel. And, and a lot of we worked up there all those years. Mm -hmm. So many people walked through the door and said, I didn't know this was up here. So maybe a little marketing down there on San Benito Street. Yeah, we talked. What's uh, your big the, sign down there? You got a bunch of other signs down there. Yeah, the Parks Commission on Tuesday night was hoping that at some point when we're at to the point where we're ready to have um, a lot of people head back up there to have that properly signed because yeah. really Park Hill is. It's you don't really notice it, and but the road's so nice now, so it can really and more people will travel up and down more safe than we used to. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's that's really uh, good. And one other thing, I thank you for talking about parks. Is, I apologize. Labor Day weekend will be the last day of the water feature, um, and we will be working mm -hmm. on uh, rehabbing that facility again and having it prepared for next year so that we don't worry about whether or not it opens on time. So the surface. It was still a big success. A huge year. success. This year. I know. Yeah. So. I wish I had little kids to take there. I saw you playing in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't tell me. Okay, any more? Any other department? Uh, that's reports? it for me. I don't any know if Joe and Abraham reports? have Abraham, Joe. Okay. No, Planning Commission reports. Anybody? Anybody? I just have, um, you know, we've got music in the park that starts this Saturday. Man, One of the things great. we've been trying to do is, uh, my wife and I have just, we both, you know, I think that the the Junior Giants and all the improvements done at Dunn Park are fantastic. And to me, that's the signature park in, Hol in downtown Hollister. So we've been wanting to add music into it, kind of like what we did with the, um, you know, upstairs. They used to do the Briggs building a long, long time ago on a Friday night. But just do something free for families. That's the whole purpose behind it. So I went to Joe Austinson and um, Francie, and they were all they they were totally open to it. So they're setting up the bands. This is the the goal is to do this the last Saturday of every month, and we'll do it. Uh, we've already got the dates set for August, September, October will be the 24th, just because the 31st is Halloween is, is on a 31st is on a Saturday, and that's Halloween. So we moved it back. But um, two bands, four to six. I don't know what we do without Mr. Austinson because yeah, he really so. serves the youth, and he's just a wonderful man and gives a lot, a lot to uh, his community. Best thing, you know, you guys on Facebook go to the event page I set up uh, called Music in the Park. Share and invite, share and invite, share and invite. Social media is the best way to get the word Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And uh, just, you know, this the plan is when we start back in the spring to have this every, you know, we'll, we'll quit for the winter, but start back in probably April and make it an ongoing event. So just a fun thing, just a fun free thing. Uh, I just want to report also uh, myself. Um, well, I've been on the Planning Commission for three years next month. I missed one meeting because I was late and it lasted 10 minutes. I got my time confused. Remember, Bill, yeah. you're rounding the corner. I said, well, where are you going? You said, it's over. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> So I do want to, to say that next month I will not be here. I'm going on a family vacation, a very important family vacation. Uh, that one, I kind of messed up when I scheduled it. I do want to say that I forgot about my obligation to the Planning Commission, but I couldn't change it because it's a no refund kind of thing. Uh, and then to compound that, my 25th wedding anniversary is in November. I'm, I'm leaving that week. And, th and this is the week, it's the third Thursday because of Thanksgiving. I'm gonna miss another meeting. I'm gonna miss two meetings, but please forgive me because I'll tell you that I probably won't miss any more. I don't miss meetings, but those two things happen the way they did. I have every confidence that this commission will take care of business. So those, that's I wanna let you know. I'm not here in September or November, okay? 
Anything else? Yeah, I just like to thank the Park and Recreation Department for uh, movies in the park. My family attended, and the last one was very well attended, well run. Um, uh, just a great time for all. A little cold, but hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, the movie was uh, the Go the Goonies, and uh, everybody loved it. So I want to say thank you, yeah. thank you for the uh, to the Parks and Rec Department for putting that on. That's a great. Uh, you know, free asset to our uh, community. So, do, thank do, you. Do we find that the location works better than the Fourth Street line? Uh, Dunn Park. Better? I think so. I yeah. didn't get over there, so. Um, but I think one of the things that we may, and this isn't really for part. If you allow me to do this on the commission reports, I think one of the things that we may try to do next year is actually rotate the parks because again, I think. Calaveras yeah. has some amenities that people don't know about, and it may be a marketing mm -hmm. tool to get people to visit other parks yes. in their community. Good so That's a good it, idea. it may be, we may try to do done, we may try to do. That's a great idea. I mean, so we'll, we'll see what happens and how easy it is to, to move things around. And so. that's, that's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So that was my, if it was really a good idea. That was that was mine. <laughs> it is a good idea because more people. Are I really wasn't mine, it. but I'm taking credit for it now. Why not serve, you know, other sectors of the community with that kind of right. thing? Good. Okay, so anything else? So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Most, meeting adjourned. Next meeting, Thursday, September 24th, 6 p.m.